funding for government grants so again one of the super easy standards super easy standards uh, meaning first we need to understand the meaning of government grant recognition what do you mean by recognition every accounting standard talks about recognition measurement what is recognition i've told you recognizing in the books means recording in the books exactly recognition and measurement measurement at what value it should be recognized so when you should uh, do the accounting upon receipt what is the accounting and upon refund what is the accounting this is what we are discussing in the standard okay fine come on what is a government grant should i study the definition of government grant see maximum if you can write the definition it is the best so what is a government grant not definition the meaning government grant is a government assistance okay understand government grant is a government assistance by transfer of resources by government of course the government will give you maybe an asset or money cash right so government grant is a government assistance by transfer of resources by government to one entity or a range of entities not just to one entity maybe to all entities having a turnover less than 50 lakhs this grant is uh, or this particular type of loan is there at concessional rates or some grant package is announced for those entities which are in into export or uh, export maybe not to one entity but to a range of entities upon satisfaction of past present or future conditions upon satisfaction of past present or future conditions understood government grant is a government assistance by transfer of resources by government to one entity or to range of entities upon satisfaction of past present future conditions okay now when do you recognize this government grant in the books when do you recognize government grant in the books from this area onwards there is no doubt you should focus attibulate padikanam so when there is a reasonable assurance that when there is a reasonable assurance that the conditions will be satisfied and grant will be received then government grant should be recognized in the books once more that is when there is a reasonable assurance that the conditions will be satisfied there is a reasonable assurance that the conditions will be satisfied and the grant will be received recognize grant in the books okay so if the grant is receivable um, you have applied for for it and it is confirmed that you will be receiving the grant but not yet received can you record government grant in the books yes of course i can pass the entry grant receivable to grant i can pass the journal entry what is the entry grant receivable to grant entry can be passed grant receivable to government grant okay so study this two points okay when there is a reasonable assurance that the conditions will be satisfied and grant will be received understood grant will be received two points okay now accounting accounting of government grant so third area accounting so government grant accounting government grant for the purpose of accounting is broadly divided into two types for the purpose of accounting government grant is divided into two types monetary grant and non monetary grant so you know what is monetary grant monetary the grant will be in fixed monetary terms fixed money terms so monetary grant you received the entity received cash or non monetary grant not cash but some in a, some other form you received grant in some other form that is in the form of an asset okay so grant in cash grant in kind understood so this a uh, monetary grant you received so what is the entry bank account debit to grant bank to grant will be the entry bank to grant okay fine now the question is 
it is clear bank to grant now for what purpose this grant is received the accounting is based on for what purpose for what purpose you received grant so you received grant for for see monetary grants again divide into three you should study that monetary grant is divided into three types one is for acquisition of assets two promoters contribution as promoters contribution government is also acting as a promoter or three as an income or for meeting expense for operational purposes so operating expense or as an operating income so government grant if you received in cash is divided into three types acquisition of assets or as a promoter's contribution or income or expense understood if the grant is received for acquisition of assets it is again divided into two for the acquisition of depreciable assets or non depreciable asset acquisition of depreciable asset or non depreciable asset uh, okay fine so come on let's do the accounting acquisition of assets so now the first point acquisition of assets so grant is broadly divided into two monetary non monetary monetary grant is again divided into three for acquisition of assets for uh, or as promoter's contribution then the last one is income or expense now this acquisition of assets is again divided into two uh, yes acquisition of assets is again divided into two depreciable non depreciable so now the first point if grant is received to acquire if the grant is to acquire non depreciable asset if the grant is to acquire non depreciable asset or promoter's contribution the grant should be credited to capital received study study now grant is received for a non depreciable asset see grant is received for acquiring a land only one non depreciable asset right you have studied pp non depreciable asset is land so grant is received to acquire land or grant is in the nature of promoter's contribution what is promoter's contribution do you have anything to say what is promoter's contribution say something so which means you are starting a business okay government is giving you grant when you start a business so government is not uh, government is actually helping you as a government is getting the character of a promoter because promoters only put funds at the beginning is yes or no so government is also giving you money at the beginning so it's like a promoter's contribution so promoter's contribution it should be credited to capital reserve so what is the journal entry bank to government grant government grant to capital reserve can i combine these two journal entries of course you can combine these two journal entries can be combined so uh, this can be combined journal entries can be combined so first point government grant received to acquire non depreciable asset the grant is to purchase land or grant as a promoter's contribution grant in the nature of promoter's contribution meaning government is putting funds when you are or giving you funds when you are starting a business you are when you are setting up a business government is giving you funds so it is in the nature of promoter's contribution it is in the nature of promoter's contribution so if it is in the nature of promoter's contribution grant amount should be credited to capital reserve are you clear yes 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 now depreciable asset if the government grant you received is to acquire a depreciable asset 
government grant is received to acquire a depreciable asset what is this depreciable asset all other assets of furniture may be land sorry building uh, or uh, any plant and machinery to acquire a depreciable asset then there are two treatments there are two treatments if the grant is acquire uh, grant you received is to acquire a depreciable asset then there are two treatments what are the two treatments treatment number 1 adjust grant amount from the cost of asset no no it's not clear grant when you receive universal entry is bank to grant right in any case you can write if you received grant monetary grant bank to grant then you purchased an asset asset to bank Yes, bank to grant, asset to bank. Now you can adjust this grant to asset. You can adjust this grant amount against asset. That is what. What is the journal entry when you adjust grant amount to asset? When you adjust grant amount to asset, asset is having debit balance. Grant is to be adjusted means grant debit to asset. So no grant to asset. Very good. So adjust the grant amount from the cost of asset. Okay. Treat the grant as deferred income. Option number two. What is your option number two? Treat the grant as deferred income. At uh, that time, that is not clear. So the first one is clear. Bank to grant, asset to bank, then grant to asset. So only that asset will be appearing at the balance figure, total minus grant amount. Okay. Now the second option is treating the grant as deferred income. What do you mean by this? Treating the grant as deferred income. Your first entry anyway, bank to grant. Okay. So your first entry is bank to grant. Understood? Then, then grand will be set up as a deferred income like grand will appear in your balance sheet as a non current liability or a current liability what repeat repeat grand is setting up as a deferred income means grant you received will be recorded as an income received in advance in the nature of income received in advance and will be taken to pnl as income over the useful life of asset over the life of asset you will be recognizing that grant amount as income so what are the journal entries bank to grant okay first entry second entry grant to pnl grant to pnl grant to pnl grant to pnl like that over the useful life of the asset in the ratio of depreciation which means depreciation is slm expense slm <coughs> sorry income also slm expense wdv then income also in that ratio more expense more income will be shown less expense less income will be shown so that it will be having a set of effect asset related expense asset related income anyway for that we'll see a question are you okay so where are we standing we have started the accounting of government grant okay accounting of government grant accounting of government grant for the purpose of accounting of government grant grant is divided into two types monetary non monetary monetary non monetary okay monetary grant is again divided into three acquisition of assets promoters contribution income or expense nature now actually speaking you have studied the accounting of all this no ah okay now acquisition of asset depreciable asset if the asset is uh, if the grant is received for an depreciable asset then you have two adjustments what are the two adjustments deduct it from the cost of asset or show it as a deferred income are you clear deduct it from the cost of asset or show it as a deferred income both options are available okay that is clear then if the grant is to acquire a non depreciable asset bank to capital reserve if i pass a single entry it will be bank to capital reserve okay 
Now, if it is in the nature of promoter's contribution, bank to capital reserve again, bank to grant, grant to capital reserve. Okay, fine, fine. Now, if the grant is to, uh, grant, if the grant is in the nature of an income for a certain number of years or to meet expense for a certain number of years, then this should be, that the grant received should be recognized as deferred income for the period in which the grant is received. Okay. So, very easy. Are you clear up to this? Yes. Now, now, non-monetary grant. Non-monetary grant is even more simple. Non-monetary grant. You received a non-monetary grant, which means you received an asset. Non-monetary grant you received means you received an asset. If you have received an asset, what is the treatment? If you have received an asset, you didn't pay anything for that asset. But there is a land of one acre you received as a grant. Then record that land at nominal value. Record that land at nominal value. Record that land at what do you mean by nominal value? Minimum value. If you paid a minimum value, that value or even 1 rupee, 10 rupees, 100 rupees. But in one of the examples in our study material, uh, 50,000 is considered as a nominal value. Then you record it at 50,000. But at nominal value, minimum value, if one acre land, one crore value, you won't record it at fair value or that cost or that whatever um, value of that land, it will be recorded at minimum value. Okay, so the land will be recorded at its minimum value. Uh, asset will be recorded at nominal value. Generally, we say 1 rupees, 100 rupees, 10 rupees, etc, etc. At an immaterial value. Okay. Yes. Now, income or expense, treat the grant as deferred income and amortize it to, it's it over the period of grant to statement of P&L. Clear, clear. Oh, it's fine. Yes. Now, refund of government grant. What is the accounting of refund of government grant? What is the accounting of refund of government grant? Refund of government grant is considered as an extraordinary activity. Refund. You received government grant. You were supposed to satisfy conditions. But you didn't satisfy condition. So it is treated as an extraordinary activity. Disclosed as an extraordinary activity. And refund accounting. If for just reverse the journal entries. If the refund is of grant is to be done. Um. If that grant is received for non-depreciable asset or grant was in the nature of promoter's contribution but in, but due to some reasons you had to refund it. What is the entry? Oh, easy. When you received, you credited to capital reserve. So, when you refund, it should be debited. Capital reserve should be debited. Yes or no? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Depreciable asset. The grant was received for depreciable asset. Then there were two treatments. Yes, there were two tre treatments. So, if grant is adjusted against the value of asset, grant was originally adjusted against the value of asset, then the entry was grant to asset. Right? Grant to asset. Okay. Now, you reverse the entry. Asset to grant and grant to bank. Asset to grant and grant to bank. Okay. Or you pass a single entry asset to bank. Okay. Uh, pretty man. It's manageable, right? It's okay. It's okay. It's manageable. Clear. Then, ma'am. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. One second. One second. Ma'am, if received as income, record it as deferred income. Then on what basis it has amortized? See, if it is received as income, it will be amortized for the period in which the grant is received. 
if the grant is received for three years it will be amortized over a period of three years uh, if it is for meeting expense and if that expense is specifically given maybe in that ratio but generally in the uh, over the period in which it is received okay yes now depreciable asset grant is treated as deferred income or you received a grant to meet income or expense in both case p and l if it is already credited to p and l p and l is debited if already credited to p and l already credited already amortized to p and l p and l is debited no only a portion credited to p and l balance is still appearing in the balance sheet then unamortized value in the balance sheet government grant debited so government grant account is already appearing deferred government grant is already appearing so p and l government grant to bank so this can uh, summarize the or these uh, are the summarized theory portion of as12 one of the very easy standards so shall we try out the questions yes 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 now just give me a moment first other accounting standards So, these points are very important. What I will tell you is read the study material. Read study material always. Government grants are assistance by government in cash or kind for, the, for future past uh, compliance with conditions. But this will not include government grants, uh, government assistance which cannot be reasonably have a value placed on them and transactions with government which cannot be distinguished from normal trading transactions so what is this too assistance that does not have a value cannot reasonably have a value is excluded government grant does not include grant which cannot be measured cannot be measured in monetary terms example government advices sometimes government will be giving some advices which cannot be measured it cannot be considered as a grant at all but that advice was very relevant for you uh, which is helpful in the business but if if it cannot be measured in monetary terms it will not be considered as oh, otherwise also we never thought that it could be a government grant two sometimes government will give you see government is planning to uh, do the construction of a flyover government is planning to construct a flyover and in this flyover so government is uh, inviting quotations and you you also have given quotation and you got it you got that bid and you are doing that construction work will it be treated as a government grant no normal trading transactions normal business transactions are excluded from uh, it cannot be considered as government grant okay understood so government grant there are two approaches for accounting capital approach income approach 
what is this capital approach capital approach means uh, we record we consider this promoter's contribution and non depreciable asset in capital reserve it is not income it is a capital it is received as a capital from the government income approach is uh, uh, depreciable asset or operational grants will be credited to pnl and it will be recorded as income will be shown under other incomes okay 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 so when you can recognize grant government grant is not recognized which means government is not recognized until so government grant will be recognized if there is reasonable assurance that the conditions will be satisfied and the grant will be received so not recognized until means it will be recognized when there is reasonable assurance okay so just examples non monetary grants non monetary assets received uh, such as land or other resources at concessional rates it will be recorded at acquisition cost free of cost if you received then it will be recorded at free of cost it is received it will be recorded at nominal value ex convent wishes to open a school in locality it applies to state authority for grant of land state authority grants the land for construction of the purpose uh, of the school construction the market value of land is 20 crores however the authority provides the land at a nominal cost of 50 lakhs including cost of registration which means the uh, ex convent had to pay 50 lakhs to the government right as or no 50 lakhs i had paid that is my cost so record this at 50 lakhs that's it um okay so the if there is a reasonable assurance that uh, has a reason to believe that it will meet the above stated condition it can recognize the land at rupees 50 lakhs okay so um yeah i hope it's okay clear mm. so uh, how will you present this so how do you present the grant in the financials when you do the accounting how will you present the grant the grant is shown as a deduction from the gross value of asset or having its book value or it can be recognized in pnl over the useful life of depreciable asset by way of a reduced depreciation charge okay the when the grant equals the whole or virtually the whole of the cost of the asset then the asset will be shown at uh, nominal value what is that see which means i am buying an asset of 50 lakhs and the grant received is also equal to 50 lakhs so what if i show it as a deduction from the asset then it becomes zero right ah that's not possible then the grant should be recorded at a nominal value mm -hmm. rupees uh, what is the nominal value that entity has to identify but if it's okay to have 1 rupee 10 rupees 100 rupees or a question provides a nominal value that you can show okay so what are the questions so that's it what are the questions as i said very easy first one is it limited purchased fixed assets for 50 lakhs which has estimated useful life of 5 years salvage value of 5 lakhs on purchase of the asset government granted it a grant for 10 lakhs pass necessary entries in the books of the company for first to two years if grant amount is deducted from the value of asset come on what are the journal entries to be passed first entry is bank to grant how much grant you received 10 lakhs and asset pp fixed asset you debit anything fixed asset because they have said fixed assets are quite fixed assets to bank 50 lakhs then they are saying it is grant amount is deducted from the value of asset so next entry is next entry is grant to fixed asset 10 lakhs instead 
the study material is doing directly bank to fixed asset. Grand, grand cancelled bank to asset. Can I do that? Yes, combined entries are welcome. Okay, fine. So now the asset value is only 40 lakhs in the book. In the books, asset value is only 40 lakhs. Yes. So if the asset value is only 40 lakhs, now depreciation is to be charged. What is the journal entry for depreciation? Depreciation to asset or depreciation to accumulated depreciation. Depreciation to asset or I always suggest you to do this. Depreciation to asset or accumulated depreciation. How much? 40 lakhs minus 5 lakhs salvage value divided by 5 years. 35 divided by 5. So, how much will be the depreciation? 7. Past journal entries for first 2 years. So, now depreciation entry has to be repeated. That's it. Fixed assets to bank. Bank to fixed assets. Okay. Depreciation to fixed assets 7 lakhs. And don't forget p and l to depreciation. Depreciation will be charged to p and l. Again, repeat the next set of entries. Are you okay? Yes. Then, which we already said, grants related to depreciable assets are treated as deferred income, which is recognized in p and l um, over the useful life. Non-depreciable asset will be credited to uh, capital reserve. If a grant related to non-depreciable asset requires fulfillment of certain obligation, the grant, relate, the grant is credited to income over the same period over which cost of meeting such obligation is charged to income. So, what is this? This point actually we didn't discuss before. Uh, so, tell me what is this? See, if non-depreciable asset non-depreciable asset okay non-depreciable asset we divide it like this conditional non-conditional unconditional no conditions so, you got non-depreciable asset or you are receiving money to acquire land and there is unconditional, it can be credited to capital reserve. If there are conditions attached to it, if there are conditions attached to it, then the, what the standard says, it can also be credited to p and l. So, like deferred income, it can be credited to P&L in the ratio of, in the ratio of cost of satisfying conditions. 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 To satisfy conditions, what is the cost? In that ratio, it can be recognized in p and l. So, once more, that is, if grant related to non-depreciable asset requires fulfillment of certain obligations. So, generally, land, uh, grant, grant related to land will be given when conditions are satisfied. There were conditions, you satisfied conditions, then only related to land you will be receiving grant. That is the assumption. But if there are still conditions to be satisfied, the grant is credited to income. Income means income approach, capital approach. Income means p and l over the same period over which cost of meeting such obligation is charged to income. Uh, which means how many years you will take to satisfy the condition during that period. Uh, that it, it will be recognized as income. Are you okay? <clears throat> so, generally, if cost nothing is given, it will be spread over. If the condition period is 5 years, grand income will also be spread over 5 years. 
Did you get that point? Now, let's find out the questions. Questions. Once we do the questions, it will be okay. X limited purchased fixed assets for 50 lakhs. Okay. X limited purchased fixed assets for 50 lakhs, which has estimated life of 5 years with salvage value 5 lakhs. Or oh, the same question which we did. On purchase of assets, government granted 10 lakhs. Past journal entries uh, in the uh, in the books of the company for first few year, first two years, if the grant is treated as deferred income. Oh, same set of easy set of journal entries. So first one when you received grant bank two grant, how much bank bank two grant ten lakhs. Asset two bank, how much is asset two bank? Fifty lakhs. Then depreciation to asset. How much is depreciation to asset? 50 lakhs minus 5 lakhs. 45 lakhs divided by 5 years, 9 lakhs. So is the depreciation on SLM basis? Yes. Then grant to P and L. I'll directly pass grant to P and L. 10 divided by 5, 2 lakhs. Depreciation should be charged to PNL as well. So, uh, it's like 9 lakhs will appear as expense and 2 lakhs will appear as income. So, net is 7 lakhs depreciation. That 7 lakhs is what charged as depreciation in the previous question. I saw no. Yes. So, but here we will show it separately. So, fixed assets to bank, a bank to deferred government grant, depreciation to asset, PNL to depreciation, government grant to PNL. Should I write deferred government grant? Okay. If you write government grant to PNL or deferred government grant to PNL, that will not have an impact on your marks. Okay. So, same. Depreciation and deferred income will continue. So, there are so many questions in this uh, standard. Santosh Limited has received a grant of 8 crores from government for setting up a factory in backward area. Setting up a factory means factory you are starting. So, then that government grant is in the nature of promoter's contribution. <coughs> Out of this grant, Company distributed 2 crores as dividend. Oh, that's wrong. You received government grant for setting up a factory and you distributed it as dividend. Then it is wrong. Then, Santosh Limited received land free of cost from government. But it has not recorded it at all in the books as no money has been spent. In the light of AS12, examine whether the treatment of both grants is correct. No. So, grant received for a specific purpose, it should be used for that purpose. So, it, it is not correct to distribute dividend. Uh, in the second case, even if no money has been spent, the land should be recorded in the books at what value? Nominal value. So, both the treatments are incorrect or wrong as per AS12. Understood. Understood. Then... X, company X. So, this is a good question. Company X runs a charitable hospital. It incurs, so we are running a charitable hospital. It incurs salary of doctors, staff, etc. to the extent of 30 lakhs per annum. As a support, the local government grants a lump sum payment of 90 lakhs to meet the salary expense for a period of 5 years. So, I got the grant for a period of 5 years. Then what should I do? If grant is related to operational revenue or expense, it should be spread over a period of 5 years. Yes or no? Amortized, uh, it should be recorded as a deferred grant and amortized to pay until over a period of <coughs> 5 years. It's correct if you show it as other income. It's correct if you deduct it against the salary. Expense either you can deduct or you sh can show it as income. 
in both case past journal entry is easy bank to deferred grant 90 lakhs first year salary to bank 30 lakhs now deferred income to pnl deferred income means deferred government grant to pnl 18 lakhs repeat salary to bank deferred government grant to pnl okay now if it is shown as uh, if it is adjusted from salary bank to deferred grant bank to deferred grant 90 lakhs now salary to bank 12 yes salary to uh, bank 12 you could have passed the journal entry like this salary 30 lakhs to bank 12 lakhs or you can you pass the entry like the salary to bank 30 lakhs sorry salary to bank 30 lakhs the next entry p and l to uh, p and l deferred grant to salary <coughs> salary is 30 lakhs deferred grant i am adjusting 8 lakhs and balance only i am charging to p and l just see this so both either net effect in p and l is only 12 lakhs salary 30 lakhs from the salary i will be deducting this deferred grant 18 lakhs so net amount that will be charged to p and l will be 12 because to bank anyway you will be paying 30 current year each year 30 and 90 you already received so anyway whatever is comfortable all will be having the same net effect but salary expense to bank should be 30 lakhs only this is not correct salary expense to bank 30 lakhs then only salary debit 30 and credit um, 18 net effect 12 will uh, will be that, that if uh, that will get cancelled and 12 lakhs debit balance will come only if i do this two set of journal entries yes or no So, if I do 12 lakhs salary debit 18 lakhs, then it will be negative 6. So, that's that's wrong. That's not correct. Salary to bank 30 lakhs. Now, deferred income to salary expense. So, what is more correct is P and L debit. Deferred P and L debit 12 lakhs. Yes. Okay. Now, again a very easy question. Top and Top Limited has set up its business in a designated backward area which entitles the company to receive Government of India a subsidy of 20% of cost of investment. So, Top and Top has set up its business. So, this is what I should understand. Setting up a business in designated backward area and will receive a government grant of 20% of cost of investment for which no repayment was ordinarily expected. No repayment was ordinarily expected. So, which means government is giving you as a promoter's contribution which is generally not refundable. Moreover, there is no condition. Okay. Having fulfilled 50 crores is the total capital assets acquired. 10 crore received from government. So, what is the accounting? So, uh, the, the company wants to treat this as an item of revenue, thereby reduces the losses in PNL. So, is it correct? <coughs> no. Just re read the answer fully later. It's in the nature of uh, uh, promoter's contribution. So, it's contribution towards total capital. No repayment is expected. So, treat it as capital reserve. Okay. 
How would you treat the following in the accounts in accordance with AS 12? 35 lakhs received from local authority for providing medical facilities to employees. 35 lakhs received from local authority to provide medical facility to employees. Either it's not related to acquiring of assets, not promoter's contribution. It is related to revenue. So either recognize as other income or the period for which it is received or reduce from the medical expenses actually incurred. You can deduct it from expense or can show it as income. Yes or no? Yes, 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 yes. <coughs> hundred lakhs received as a subsidiary subsidy from the um, sorry hundred lakhs received as a subsidiary from the government for setting up a unit in notified backward area subsidy is in the nature of nature of promoters contribution so capital reserve okay government grand refund so this question I am giving to you. Very simple. Just one entry. Question number 8. I think there are 12 questions. Yes. 8. A fixed asset is purchased for 20 lakhs. Okay. Government grant received towards it is 8 lakhs. So asset purchased is 20. We received a grant for 8 lakhs. Residual value 4 lakhs. Useful life 4 years. Assume depreciation on a straight line basis. As it is shown in the balance sheet, net of grant. So, cost from the cost it is deducted. After one year, grant becomes refundable to the extent of 5 lakhs. Due to non-compliance of conditions. Oh, after one year. Pass journal entry for first two years. Easy. Bank to grant. 8 lakhs. Okay. Asset to bank, 20 lakhs. So, grant to asset, 8 lakhs. Now, the total grant value is adjusted against the asset. So, it is asset value is 12 lakhs. So, how much will be the depreciation? 12 lakhs minus residual value, 4 lakhs, divided by 4 years. So, depreciation will be 2 lakhs. Yes. So, first year you pass the entry depreciation to asset P and L to depreciation. Then, second year the grant is refundable. Oh. So, what is the journal entry when grant is refundable? How much grant is refundable? 5 lakhs grant is refundable. So, what will be the entry? Nothing great. Asset to Bank. What is the entry? Asset to bank. So, how much will be the depreciation now? So, asset was 20. You adjusted grant 8. You depreciated 2 lakhs. <coughs> now, added 5 lakhs. So, 10 plus 5, 15 lakhs is the value now. Yes. And the remaining life is? Remaining life is how many years? Yes, uh, not 15. 15 minus residual value is there 4 divided by 3 years. So, how much is the amount to be depreciated? 11 by 3, 3.67. Are you clear? Are you okay? Yes. Easy set of entries.
on 1st April 2011, ABC Limited received government grant of 300 lakhs for acquisition of machinery, 1,500 lakhs. Same, the grant was credited to asset, cost of the asset. Life is 5 years, depreciated on 20%. The company had to refund the grant in May due to new non-fulfillment of condition. So, May means number of months don't count. No need to count because April financial year started may so two months depreciation no so they are telling how do you deal with the refund assuming the company did not charge depreciation may very don't consider depreciation for two months beginning it is refundable then how will you account so you received grant then on 1st april 11 11 12 depreciated 12 13 13 14 three years depreciated and now refundable. So take your calculator and just check. 1500 minus 300. 1200 is the asset value at the beginning. Now you depreciated 20% first year minus 20% second year minus 20% third year. So what is the asset value now? And you had to refund means plus 300 depreciated for. So, you got this figure, right? 614.4. Then add refund. So, revised book value is 914.4. <coughs> so, now you calculate depreciation prospectively over the remaining useful life of the asset. That's it. Okay. A limited purchased a machinery for 40 lakhs. Useful life 4 years, residual value 8 lakhs, government grant is 16 lakhs. Show journal entry to be passed at the time of refund. If grant in the third year, if grant is credited to fixed assets, grant is credited to deferred grant. Fixed asset part we are not discussing. If it is credited to fixed asset account, we don't want to discuss. Why? Because it's already done two times. Now you check by yourself because it's so easy. Now, uh, if the grant received is 16 lakhs, useful life 4 years. So, grant that would be credited to P&L is 4 lakhs each year. So, first year, second year, third year, the grant is refundable in the third year. So, what is the journal entry? So, first year, second year, third year, so here it is 5. If the asset is, a uh, grant is credited to asset, asset to bank. <coughs> if the grant is credited to deferred grant, we'll see first year 4 lakhs already credited to PNL. Second year 4 lakhs is already credited to PNL. Third year grant is refundable. The entry will be PNL already credited 8 lakhs. Deferred government grant balance 8 lakhs to bank. Is there anything should I discuss extra? I feel all these are very easy. So, anything should we consider? Is it okay? Okay. No, grand. So, same question. You had a charitable hospital salary to doctors 30 lakhs government has given you a grant for five years 90 lakhs at the start of year four you didn't satisfy the condition and grant is refundable entire grant is refundable so which means 90 lakhs is for five years start of year four means three lakhs already charged three years already charged to p and l so 90 by five into three 54 lakhs is already credited to PNL. Balance remaining is 90 minus 54, 36. So, what is the entry? Deferred grant, PNL to bank. Let's see. Supriya Limited received a grant. Supriya Limited received a X Limited has received a grant of 20 crores for purchase of a qualified machine costing 80 crores. X Limited has a policy to recognize grant as deferred income, useful life is 10 years. Then what is the amount of other income to be recognized in PNL? 
will again an easy question. See, correct. See, so theory questions I am not reading. Um, see, Supriya Limited received a grant. Supriya Limited received a grant of 2500 lakhs during the accounting year for welfare activities to be carried on by the company for its employees. So, not a grant related to asset, not a grant related to uh, what promoters' contribution. The grant prescribed conditions for utilization, however, during 1213. What happened? It was found that the conditions of grant were not complied and the grant had to be refunded. Um, elucidate the current accounting treatment with reference to AS12. A grant related to revenue is refundable in the next year itself. Uh, so, what is the treatment? So, for how many years that grant is given? Not mentioned in the question. Anyway, how will I answer this? If I get this question as a 4 marks question, as per AS12, grant sometimes becomes refundable if conditions are not fulfilled. Then this is correct. The grant becomes refundable is treated as an extraordinary item. The amount refundable in respect of a government grant related to revenue is first against unamortized deferred credit. Uh, remaining in respect of the grant. To the extent amount refundable exceeds any such deferred credit or where no deferred credit exists, that amortized portion will be adjusted with PNL. In the present case, amount of refund of government grant should be first adjusted against <coughs> unamortized deferred income and excess to PNL and show, disclose it as an extraordinary item. So, amounts are not given. So, just theory. So, that's it. So, nothing more to be done in AS12. This is fine. Uh, you can revise the whole thing in one hour, maybe maximum. 